Uh, excuse me, ma'am. We don't have that kind of history here. But I think I know who can help you. Ah, you needn't be afraid. You are my guest. <laughs> Sit down, my friends, and let me tell you a story about an old friend of mine. He means a ghost story. You see, all of our friends are ghosts, zombies, vampires, or otherwise undead. <laughs> it was during the Douglas County Gold Fever of 1873. A wealthy Denver banker found himself traveling the old stage route to Pueblo, Colorado. Oh, goody! A cowboy story and a ghost story. My favorite. <laughs> Our tale brings us to this lonely cabin in Coyote Gulch. It is the home of the McIntyre clan. The very name once struck dread into the hearts of all who lived in the area. <laughs> But back to our traveler from Denver. Having missed his stagecoach at 20 Mile House Station, he decided to walk the 10 additional miles to the next stop in Russellville. A sudden thunderstorm broke upon him. Unfortunately, the nearest place to seek shelter was the McIntyre cabin. The McIntyre brothers already suspected of various nefarious deeds involving missing wayfarers, took one look at the stranger's fine clothing and couldn't believe their luck. The weary banker was shown upstairs and offered a bed for the night. But as he slept, the two brothers crept into the room, crept up to the bed, and... After relieving their supposed guest of his valuables, the McIntyres drugged the body off and buried it out behind the house. That was the end of our unfortunate traveler, but not the end of our story, because a few days later, a search party assembled by the friends of the missing man arrived at the McIntyre home. Having followed the victim's trail to this place, they quickly found evidence of the grisly fate. Blood stains on the bed, drag marks on the floor, and finally, the buried body itself. The McIntyre clan was immediately taken into custody 
and found guilty of their heinous crime. Ever since that day, the murder house has stood empty and desolate. For many years, travelers passing by, and occasionally those brave enough to venture inside the abandoned McIntyre home, have sworn that the place was still haunted by the murdered man. <coughs> I scared myself. Oh, darling, really? My Norlock does tend to exaggerate just a wee bit. Now we know that's not quite how the story goes now, is it? Maybe. In fact, no one at the McIntyre cabin has ever claimed to have actually seen a ghost, much less been accosted by one. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the place isn't haunted. For those living along Coyote Gulch, as well as travelers passing through, have claimed many years later that you could still hear the dying man's mortal cry every night, bellowing forth like a banshee's wail from the empty place from which he met his untimely end. <laughs> Suffice it to say that most travelers don't care to stay in the vicinity for long. And that's not the only cowboy tale that's told around these parts. Nor the only ghost story. <laughs> For out behind the site where Douglas County High School stands today is a dry creek bed known as Hangman's Gulch, so named since the days of the Old West. Our story begins in 1867, when a homesteader in the Castle Rock area paid a visit to his neighbor. only to find him freshly murdered. The local folk turned their attention towards two strangers who had been seen passing through the area, headed south along East Plum Creek. A posse was soon on its way to track the pair down. They caught up with the two suspects in the area of Palmer Lake and found them to be in possession of articles belonging to the murder victim. As one all but confessed to the crime, the two men were taken into custody. On the way back north, one of the captives became violent and abusive. That was probably a mistake. Well, so much for that fellow. We'll get back to him later. Meanwhile, the posse continued on their way with their remaining prisoner until reaching that dry creek bed we now call Hangman's Gulch. There, they held a quick trial under a suitably stout limbed tree. The verdict was guilty. What a couple of swingers. <laughs> the vile murderer was pronounced dead and buried on the spot. Hmm. But the hangman didn't stay in his grave for long. It was too lonely for any soul out there in the high plains. Soon, the urge for new blood stirred the dead 
corpse's murderous spirit to go out in search of new victims. <laughs> I've done it again. Oh, Norlock, darling. I wish you'd spend less time scaring yourself and more time getting the story right. You see, not that I have anything against living corpses, you understand. But I'm afraid this one met a very natural end. A few years and a few flood seasons later, erosion ate away at the gulch, and eventually the murderer's bones rose to the surface again. <sighs> well, I was almost right. Darling, you were nowhere near right, but the story doesn't end there. Those exposed bones were reconstructed and the murderer's skeleton was used for science classes in the old Castle Rock schoolhouse for many years. Until one night in 1886, the old frame school mysteriously burned to the ground, taking the infamous skeleton with it. <laughs> but was it a coincidence? Or did the schoolhouse succumb to the curse screamed out by the outlaw before his untimely death? <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us back to the first murderer. As you remember, we left him dangling there in the wind. Which is exactly where his body was left to hang as a warning to any others who might pass through with skullduggery in mind. For months, his wails and moans could be heard throughout the countryside as his hideous ghost floated from homestead to homestead in search of the ones who... <coughs> Darling, there you go again. What? There was no apparition. A very small apparition. No, darling, no. A tiny apparition. No. For months, though, the wives and daughters of the area swore they heard strange moanings in the night. These were quickly attributed to the restless spirits still hanging out there on the high plains. The women folk soon prevailed on their men to cut the body down and give it a proper burial. After that, no more tales of wailing or moaning were told to disturb anyone in the night. Well, it's hard to remember everything exactly. After all, that was over a hundred years ago, when I still had my hair. Oh. And yet it seems like only yesterday, doesn't it, dear? Where does the time go? Speaking of time, we seem to be out of it. Oh, but we'll see you again next time, when the ghosts of the West once again make their presence known to the living. And until then, good night and sweet nightmares. <laughs>